Good afternoon to you from the Johnson Space Center. Welcome to today's mission status briefing as we take a look at STS-133. The crews are about to uh, say farewell to each other here within the coming hours. And here to give us an update on all that activity is the lead shuttle flight director, Brian Lane. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Josh. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Uh, things are going very well in space today, as you all probably are well aware. The vehicles are all doing great, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, the mission, as you know, is going extremely well. We've accomplished our two EVAs and all the tasks associated with those, and those went very well. We've uh, done our two installs of the PMM and the ELC, and that went very well. So all in all, things are going great. The crew is in a little bit of off-duty right now, getting prepped for uh, hatch closing uh, later today. Some specifics on the activities. Uh, today, the crew woke up about 2.23 Central, Central Time. Uh, the farewell ceremony and hatch closure will occur about 2.33, so about 12 hours later. Um, crew sleep is at 6.23 this evening. Uh, the final activities, we got some final stowage items to take care of, and just then just to get the uh, hatches closed. Tomorrow, we're going to wake up. Crew wake is at the same time, 2.23 Central. We're going to plan for undock right around 6 a.m. Central which is about six minutes prior to, prior to orbital midnight. We did move that a few minutes earlier than typical for some, uh, to ensure we had good calm with both vehicles. SEP-1 uh, will occur, we'll do a full lap fly around like we typically do with the shuttle. And SEP-1 will occur on the plus V bar. It's about a one and a half foot per second burn. SEP-2 we're going to do as a retrograde burn. It'll be about a three foot per second. And this is a setup for orbital adjust burns that uh, uh, our entry flight director, Tony Sakachi has been coordinating with his team. Uh, we will begin our late inspection about 10.48 Central Time, when we'll wrap that up about five hours later at 3.48 Central Times, with the crew sleep about 6.23 tomorrow night. Uh, Discovery and our systems continue just to perform flawlessly. She is doing great. Uh, Systems-wise, uh, uh, Discovery is just in great shape, and we're really pleased with all that, obviously. ISS is in great shape. Uh, we hung around an extra day, as you all well know, to spend some time getting the PMM outfitted to get the HTV packed up and just to help out the increment crews, which we have done, and uh, the, the crews, the extra six bodies on board for an extra day, they were able to get through a great deal of uh, extra work for the increment stage crew. And now uh, they're looking ahead, thinking things are gonna look really good, and the, the increment stage uh, folks are gonna be in really good shape to get on with uh, the rest of the activities uh, prior to 24S departure, and then HTV departure, and a, a number of more activities coming in, in March here. Transfer numbers, I thought I'd bring you some numbers because I know you guys like to write all those down. Uh, of course, the PMM came in at 21,817 pounds. The Express uh, Logistics Carrier number four, of course, we installed that on flight day three, was 7,611 pounds. Uh, the shuttle mid-deck to ISS cargo, we transferred 2,031 pounds. And then back on the shuttle from ISS, we transferred 2,599 pounds. We'll look for an extra pound to call it an even 2,600. Um, supply water, we were able to transfer 853 pounds uh, onto station in various uh, uh, ways. Uh, we also provided them with 78 pounds of condensate and a couple of bags. On the gases for nitrogen, we put a total of 120, uh, excuse me, 112 pounds onto ISS, 28 of which went into the tanks, another 84 we pushed into the stack just to help out with overall cabin pressure. For oxygen, uh, our current numbers were tallied up to 182 pounds total. That's 110 pounds into the ISS tanks and 72 pounds into the stack. Uh, and we pushed as much O2 as we could into the vehicle and uh, ISS is in great shape from an oxygen standpoint. We also did, per the plan, take six IS, uh, lithium hydroxide uh, cans from the uh, ISS stockpile for carbon dioxide removal on board shuttle. And that was our pre-flight plan, so there's no surprise in that. But all in all, again, the mission's going extremely well. The crew's uh, getting a little bit of well-deserved rest right now with off-duty, and they are preparing for tomorrow's undock activities and then the late inspection, then the EMM minus one timeline and the orbit on the following day. So we're getting sort of back into the regular routine for a shuttle flight for undock and what happens thereafter. So the shuttle crew's doing great. The station crew is doing great. Uh, the vehicles are in great shape. And all in all, we couldn't be more pleased with how this mission is going. I uh, think that's all I got, if I got any questions. Okay, we'll take some questions from here in JSC first. Sorry, Philip. Philip Sloss with nasaspaceflight.com. Could you uh, talk a bit about, uh, I know you said Discovery's performance was great, but could you just elaborate on that a little bit? I mean, she's she's uh, done really well, and it almost seems like she's a brand new car, kind of, the way she's operating. 
Well, it's a testament uh, to the folks at KSC, the ground ops folks, who take care of uh, Discovery and the other two birds. Um, when I say she's doing great, there's no system problems. We've, we've looked at, usually when we fly, we lose a deucer, we lose a system, or not usually, but sometimes we do. And in this case, uh, Discovery's had no issues, knock on wood, we're not on the ground yet, but so far she's performed perfectly. There are no issues to talk about uh, from our side. Um, so it's a testament to the folks at KSC who's doing a great job with the vehicle. I would also add it's a testament to the fact we've been flying these shuttles for a while. We know how to take care of them. We know we've, we've gone and fixed the little things that maybe were troublesome. And uh, she's in great shape to, to take the crew home on uh, Wednesday. Robert. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, can you uh, just go over what the what the shuttle crew will be doing between crew hatch and crew hatch closure and uh, and sleep tonight? The four hours or so they have uh, between that. Okay, sure. The timeline for this evening after we close the hatch. There's not a whole lot on that side in terms of big items. They get the hatch closed, they get the, the airlock and all that bundled up and, and repacked uh, from all the ISS uh, transfer stuff we brought in. That's probably one of the biggest things, just make sure the mid-deck stowage is all ship shape. Um, they will do probably a little study and prep for tomorrow, and then they'll do their regular pre-sleep activities where they configure the vehicle for sleep. They'll also eat their dinner and things like that. But in general, it's just a standard evening, if you will, in the shuttle with no big ticket items, just getting prepped for tomorrow's uh, undocking. And I realize it's it's very early, but has there been any advance word on weather for landing? <laughs> You're funny. Um, <laughs> well, of course, we've looked at forecasts for several days now, and forecasts for Wednesday, Wednesday all look pretty good. But it's Florida weather, which is always entertaining. Um, we we will look at it, continue to look at it, right up to the decision time for the Dior burn that Tony and his uh, team will make on Wednesday, hopefully. And uh, as far as I know right now, the weather forecast is very favorable for landing on Wednesday. Okay, Denise. Denise Chow at space.com. Um, with the mission winding down and everything going so well so far, can you um, give us a sense of what the atmosphere is like in mission control and among the flight controllers? Sure. Uh, well, let's see, the station guys, of course, are very excited to have the extra part, uh, the PMM and the ELC on their vehicle, the extra volume inside. They've got some work ahead of them to go finish cleaning that up. It's still got some things all of, uh, all moved around, some extra stowage they got to take care of. But in general, they're elated that everything has gone so well. Um, their systems are all behaving very well, and on the station side, things are going well. On the shuttle side, uh, folks are... We still got several days. We've got the sort of the nominal four days in front of us for, I count that right, undock and then in a mission and then uh, landing. So three days, if you will, after today. So on the station side, we're still, I'm sorry, on the shuttle side, we're still kind of pressing ahead, waiting for our nominal activities to transpire and, and getting ready for landing. Okay, any more from here? All right, okay. let's go to the phone lines. Uh, let's see, we've got Mark Corot. Hey, thanks. Uh, I just wondered what your um, cryo margins look like now. I know you have the plus two weather. I just wondered if you had anything beyond that yet. Uh, sure, Mark. Uh, transferred a lot of O2 over to ISS, like we said. We did, uh, didn't did put it all into their onto their side. We do still have a little bit of margin above the two days we have. It's about three hours worth, if you think of it in terms of cryo, or about 30 pounds of oxygen. So we have a little bit of margin on our side still to support but obviously we don't anticipate staying up that late on Friday, uh, so it won't be uh, any issue for us, but uh, we have it there if we need it. Thanks. Okay, Marcia Dunn. Yeah, hi. I'm just wondering, Brian, do you think it'll be an emotional moment for you when um, the shuttle and docks tomorrow and Discovery leaves the space station for the last time? I uh, see, emotional moment for me, you got cut out a little bit there, but when Discovery undocks and leaves station for the last time, uh, not so much at that point for me, just because uh, we'll be focused on helping the crew do the fly about, fly around, getting those things mixed up now myself. Uh, the shuttle do the fly around, and then uh, we'll be jumping right into late inspection with the RMS activities and all of that. So for us on console, it's, it's stick with the business, take care of the crew, take care of the vehicle, make sure everything's going well. 
the emulsion may kick in later after we unplug for our last shift. The Orbit 1 shift, the last time we're on console, is tomorrow. And then the entry team takes over during that time period. So tomorrow will be my last shift. And uh, afterwards, uh, perhaps it will be a little emotional. But for the most part, we'll just be excited that the mission has gone so darn well. Thank you very much. Okay, Todd Halverson. Todd, are you there? Okay, seems like we lost Todd. Let's come back here to JSC. Are there any follow-ups here? None? Okay, we'll wrap it up. We're going to send it back to Mission Control. We want to remind you that the crew is going to wake up tomorrow morning at 2.23 a.m. Central Time. That's going to be 3.23 a.m. Eastern Time. And tomorrow morning is going to be a special day. The wake-up music is going to be the first of our wake-up music contest winners. Uh, those results are available on the web if you want to check them out, nasa.gov. But uh, we may have a couple of surprises for you uh, when we play those back. So we invite you to uh, stay tuned for that. We're going to send you back to Mission Control for more continuing coverage of STS-133.